Um, this was the piece of writing that particularly struck me. Um, when I first looked at it, it just looked interesting and fascinating and just quite beautiful. And I'd never felt that when I'd looked at maths before. Mm. And I think I was struck by, I wonder what it felt to actually create something like that for the child. That must have been a really exciting experience for the child to write something like that. Mm. Was there also a sense in your mind as a teacher thinking, I couldn't get my children to do that? Could I? Well, obviously, straight away, yes. I mean, it, it struck me as, as way beyond anything <clears> I could do. But the more I read about her, the more I thought ch six and seven year old children haven't changed. She was doing this in the 60s, but children haven't changed. The only thing between my children and this kind of work is me. Mm. So the only thing that's got to change here is me. And that change has to happen up here. And essentially, I wanted to see if what she was saying was true. Mm. Would my children react in the same way that her children did when she explained a situation, this is normally how I go about teaching this, and the children respond in this way? So my question was, will my children respond in this way? So I had to set up an activity and I had to try that out in practice. So the cycle of the research was to read a piece of text. Um, that would generate some sort of question or something I wanted to find out more about. I'd then set up a classroom activity that I could teach to the children or work with the children. And then I videoed them working mm -hmm. in small groups or with me in, in all sorts of different situations. I would then take the videos back and analyse them and look more carefully so that I could say to myself, did, did I really do what I thought I was intending to do? And, mm. and did, how did the children react? What did they say? And watching the videos back, you often notice so much more than you see as a class mm. teacher. Mm. When children are working at the empirical level, um, the, I mean, the dictionary definition of empirical is based on, ac based on or acting on observations or experiment, not on theory, deriving knowledge from experience alone. And that is what she was saying children shouldn't keep doing if they were able to move on. Um, the next phase for her, she described, was systematisation. She said this was to organise experience, to clarify facts so as to fill in gaps if some are found, to propose groupings of some significance, in a word, to invent sure means with which a thorough, thorough study of a situation could be undertaken. This activity will permit, instead of empirical discoveries at the level of facts, rational discoveries at the level of structures. That's a f and that's not necessarily to say that children need to go through an empirical phase to reach a systematisation, or that they are at empirical systematisation in all their maths at the same time. These are very much overlapping phases. Mm. So the next phase for Guttard to describe was mastery. Mm. And at that stage, the child was aware that every element or group of elements could be seen to potentially contain the infinite set of which it's part and that there is a dynamic that can take us from one element of a group to any other element. And when the child had perceived that dynamic, then they had mastery of that structure. In teaching, it's not only for the child to perceive that dynamic, but to be able to use it to their advantage. Mm. And that is where children can become more flexible in their calculation. If they've reached a mastery of structure in addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, fractions, whatever, and can turn it to their advantage when calculating, they can often just make a quick transformation and see an answer. And when I understood that, it was answering the question we originally had as a school, that our children weren't flexible in their calculating. Mm. That was what children needed to be able to reach in order to have a flexibility of calculations. And because in the past I hadn't identified that as a necessary phase for them to go through or a stage for them to reach, that is why they weren't flexible in their calculating. Mm. Mm. Um, watch your own practice very carefully. I think the video is a tremendous advantage. Being able to use the handheld video camera is very unobtrusive in the lessons. It's easy to use and it means you can go away and examine what you've just done. But watching yourself and watching the children is the most valuable thing you can gain. You learn so much from doing that. Mm. Um, Involve other people, get other people interested in what you're doing because it sometimes gives you the encouragement to carry on. But at the same time, I would say stay very focused on what it is that you want to find out because it's quite easy to be distracted into some latest initiative or something you think is the latest thing that you should be finding out. Stay true to what you want to, what, you, what your practice tells you is important.